So I'm Joanna Kirk. I'll be moderating this panel, and I will let my speakers introduce themselves. Absolutely. Hi, everyone. My name is Ellie De Broad. I'm the head of impact and ESG at Balderton Capital. Um, for those who don't know us, uh, we're one of Europe's leading venture capital firm. We are London-based and have been backing European founders for over 20 years, um, all the way from, you know, from seed to um, growth stage investing, and we uh, invest across all sectors. Hi, everyone. I'm Bindi Korea. I'm a venture partner at Molten Ventures, but I come here with many hats. I'm also a public company board member, uh, and then I sit on a lot of community boards that focus on entrepreneurship, and as well uh, working with government, uh, governmental bodies on entrepreneurship. So I'm coming at the perspective of ESG from multiple points of view. Hi, hi everybody. Uh, I'm Josepha Montana, and I'm Chief Sustainability Officer at Partec. Partec is a global VC firm uh, investing all over the world with a European um, HQ. And we manage 2.5 billion euros uh, in, in tech companies, and from seed to growth stage. So really happy to be here with you because I think that is really part of uh, our role as a VC to, uh, to drive long-lasting growth in your businesses. So happy to share it with you today. Thank you very much. I will start with the first question with you, Josepha. Yeah. Um, we were discussing this previously and um, I think it would be worth defining what sustainability is in terms of tech and startup ecosystems? Yes, absolutely. This is um, the, the main question that we received. Um, what is sustainability? What is ESG? And um, the, the approach that I really like is uh, the three P's approach of sustainability to be really linked to your business. So sustainability is how to build a long-lasting growth for your businesses and that will include so P people, because your business is above all a people matter, and the culture of your business and how the people are organized and are working together is really the main, the main aspect of your business. Then the second point is really important for you to is profit, because sustainability is growth, so you need to take into account how your business is going to make profit. And then the third one is planet, because I think the, the balance between the, the three is really important, and this is really the key of sustainable growth. And so for the planet, this is an emergency, as you well know, so how your business is taking into account uh, these issues. And for tech businesses, you are really linked to the to to how your business are going to impact people, planet, and how are you going to make profit regarding this. If any of you want to add, then please do. Um. <laughs> I mean, I think one of the challenges that sustainability faces as a, as a field is actually the sort of definitional confusion. And I think it's fair to say that to different funds and to different entrepreneurs, it will mean different things. Um, our bulletin for us, I think, simply put, it's, it's not okay anymore to, to grow and profit from exploiting people and planet. And therefore, this sustainable growth, which has, you know, this concept has been around in VC for a long time, the definition has been expanding to really include consideration of, sort of planetary boundaries and, you know, treating people responsibly. Um, I was also going to ask, because the title of the panel is very straightforwardly saying this is a new era for European VCs, while we were discussing, we kind of had this tendency to put it as a question mark, and you brought this up, Elodie, so maybe, do you think it's a new era, or do you think, and how do you think this has been evolving in the, in the recent uh, years? So, it's the same in new for VCs. Um, bad answer, but yes and no. So I think. Working anymore. 
Okay, Amy. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. Sorry. Um, so I think you know, on the one hand, sustainability has never been more explicit and mainstream. And I think the fact that you've got three <coughs> generalist VCs on stage today talking about this topic, um, some of us, you know, appointed to own and drive that agenda, is you know, is an example of that. Um, I don't think it's new, and I think we're doing ourselves a disservice by putting it as something brand new and separate from all the things that investors and entrepreneurs have been thinking about for some time now. And, you know, as Josepha was alluding to earlier, a lot of the agendas and topics that fall under this big umbrella of sustainability are things that you know, we were thinking about, um, you know, a long time ago. So, you know, treating your people in a sort of inclusive way, trying to build diverse team. Uh, we know that every single entrepreneur at sort of every early stage is trying to build a high performance team. And I think maybe it's on the on environmental side, so environmental sustainability. And I know sometimes when people hear sustainability, they think planet only, but it's much broader than that. But it's probably that environmental sustainability part of it, you know, that has become more prominent in recent years. We often have a question on is um, impact investment uh, sustainability, but sustainability is much broader than that. Yeah. And I think, yeah. So maybe I could talk about it from a yeah. boring word, value chain approach. So because I inhabit different parts of the ecosystem, including VC, I think what I did is I reached out to founders in a network that I'm on the board of, and I'm like, well, how do you look at this? Yeah. And actually what was very interesting is every single one of them just said it's inherent to who we are, and it's how we build our company, and it's how we communicate our company. And in fact, many of them were going for B Corp. So despite becoming a B Corp, being very expensive, very process-driven, really painful, they were doing it because it was important. Then they were saying, the VCs that they were working with, um, you know, the questions were more around diversity. So we'll invest in you if there's the diversity side of things. But then from the VC side, we've got two people who 100% focus on that. Um, in our team at Moulton, we do have uh, someone that is working on ESG, and actually we work with our portfolio company. So I just wanted to share a couple of cool numbers from the Moulton end. Um, we have an ESG, we're publicly listed uh, fund, so we have an ESG committee and one board member leading that, which is quite interesting. Uh, our team is 40% female personnel, which is awesome. Um, 52% of our portfolio companies actually have spoken directly with our head of ESG, so we can map what they're doing and share that out to the wider market. And most importantly, about uh, 55 of our portfolio companies map to at least one UN SDG. So what we're trying to do is all that data gathering and able to share that to the market. And then finally, the last comment I'll make on value chain is, uh, the board of the, the FTSE 250 I sit on, uh, we focus on commercial vehicle mobility, so it's automotive, and ESG is core to what our shareholders are asking for. And as an NED, we're getting educated that ESG is a core part of FTSE board agendas, and it's starting from, you know, from the early young companies. So I'm seeing it end to end, shareholder demand, from the LPs, what we're doing in VC, and actually founder-driven. So it's end-to-end -end in my view. Yeah, it's very interesting. We were discussing on the education part and the importance of that. And when you were saying mapping, I think that's a very important point too, because we get questions quite often on the transparency of it and how to measure uh, what's going on. So I know that, Josepha, you had some things, interesting things to say on that. Yes, absolutely. And to uh, uh, as a as a response uh, to, in addition to what you said, um, which is really interesting, is um, how can we consider ESG? What is ESG, and what is the purpose of ESG? ESG is really um, a useful tool for every companies. Uh, to, to, to really measure the impact of, um, of their businesses on environmental issues, of course. And this is the main famous one, if I can may say, uh, because you have a, a, a really 
methodology to measure it with this carbon footprint. So you, you can't avoid it and you can't make mistakes on this. But regarding tech industry, I would like to make a focus on the S because this is really fundamental. And the S is really regarding, for example, uh, how are you managing client data protection, for example, and um, are you managing risk on this and how are you measuring your, your risk on this. And, and thanks to this, you will be able to use ESG as a tool. And this is what we are building at Partex. This is our um, to build an ESG data room to help you gather all information regarding your impact on E, S, and G, because there are three topics here. And on this, in this ESG data room, you will be able to gather all this information to um, to to make a live uh, processes and policies on this and to share all this information with your main stakeholders because this is really useful to give the right information to customers but also to inform your VCs on what are you doing, uh, how are you organized and how are you taking into account your impact on ESNG. So this is why we are really promoting this like an ESG data room on which you can gather all your impact and measure it and give the right and transparent information to all your stakeholders. Yeah. Elodie, I know that we were discussing um, on this topic on long-term um, value and that you had um, an interesting input from the Balderton perspective. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I feel like, so we jumped to, we jumped from sustainability to ESG. And I think it's important for me, sustainability is this long-term, aspirational, hopefully achievable outcome. So, you know, as I think, Mindy, you referenced the UN Sustainable Development Goals, which are probably the, the, the global framework out there um, capturing this, this sustainable future. And... And so I think, so, and, and then it, it then comes ESG and then comes impact. So ESG, environmental, social governance, um, you know, as Josefa was saying, this toolkit really to help any company. And I think maybe that's for, for me, from me at least today, the key takeaway is that ESG is almost, oh, those universal principles that apply to any like, company, any startups from the early stage need to think about what does this mean and what does this look like for them? And then you've got impact, which is really how you are contributing to a sustainable or non-sustainable future through your core business model, your products and services. And so at Boulderton, when we say we do sustainable investing, we consider those two lenses and how we make our investment decisions. And now we've got over 25% of our portfolio who are like impact first companies, but actually I probably spend most of my time working with the other 75%, helping them to understand how embedding and building their company on those ESG principles, so principles of environmental sustainability, social responsibility, which all start with robust governance, are integral and essential to their sustainable growth and long-term value creation. And I think, Mindy, you referenced you know, there's that value chain view and thinking about all those different stakeholders, so starting from talent. Um, we know that, especially in sort of the you know, next, generation, next generation of workers who um, you know, often will be asking in the interview process, what am I working towards? Is there an explicit mission here? So something that they'll want to see, all the way to actually raising next rounds of, of funding because investors, early growth, you know, later on, also care about that to customers. Um, so I think the value creation piece is really broad. Yeah. Um, I can imagine that as a founder, um, when you're early stage uh, and you um, discuss this type of topic, um, it can be it can be a pressure point because you have to also concentrate on other priorities. Do you have uh, do, do you have this in in the, like are there specific um, situations where it's yeah? I, could see I, I, I think what was interesting with all the founders I've spoken to, and certainly the founders um, you know just through my board memberships, but also the founders that have engaged with us at the fund. I think it's, it's, it's in them, right? It, it, they don't even think about 
the faff, for lack of a better word, the British word I'll say, of what it takes to get to these certifications and the level of data input. It's just inside of who they are. And I think it's a generational thing. I think Gen X, um, not Gen X, sorry, Gen Z, millennials, it, it's how they demand what they want to see from their employers, but also how they found companies. And there's an interesting stat, something like 75% of workers will be uh, Gen Z or millennial by 2035. Mm -hmm. And that is how that generation works. So for me, it's, it's, it's inside, it's at the source, it's fundamental. And then if you think about that from a statistic point of view, something like 78% of our portfolio companies at Molten willingly completed the ESG framework that we pulled together in line with ESG VC. So we did a bit of customizing, but there wasn't really a lot of pushback about putting it forward. To me, actions speak louder than words. Mm. So that's kind of what I'm seeing. Yeah. No one so questioned I, it at all. So I'd agree that it's, you know, for a lot of people, it's, it's in them as individuals, and I think maybe all of us can speak to that to some, ex some extent, like as human beings and individuals, like this topic and this huge challenge that, you know, we, we're collectively faced with resonates with us. I do, however, find that, you know, when founders, especially, you know, early stage founders are sometimes fighting for the mere survival of their company, um, ESG has a tendency to fall down the list of priorities. And so as investors, we have to be extremely pragmatic, realistic, and, and practical in how we engage on that. And so, for example, at Boulderton, um, this week actually, we're uh, releasing our startup guide to ESG. So this is us trying to really make that um, theme, which arguably is quite opaque, quite so multifaceted that it can be hard to know where to start. So really trying to sort of break this down into actionable chunks to make it as accessible and actionable to them as possible. Yeah, and, and I observe as a trend that yeah. there are people in the funds that are focused on ESG. So at Moulton we have Grace and the portfolio companies know her and know she's there to help them and add value to their thinking. So less of the faff, right? Exactly, <laughs> yeah. that's a very yeah. important point. Yeah, yeah, yes, exactly. And, and uh, uh, um, as you say, I, I would like just to raise a point. Uh, today we saw, uh, and we see as a VC, that now 80% uh, of funds in Europe are targeting to ESG funds. So that means funds that are taking into account um, ESG criteria and a sustainable policy. And this is regarding the new European regulation on sustainability. And this is really important for, um, for businesses to understand that to, 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 to work at and raise funds, you, you have to take into account that now 80% of VC funds are uh, uh, driven by ESG factors. And this is not only a tick-the-box approach, and this is really important to understand what does that mean. That means that ESG now funds are looking for the impact of companies on environment on environment, social, governance, etc. And we are using SDGs to, to build methodology to measure what impact we have. But we also take into account the double materiality concept, yeah, that you are maybe aware of it. That means how to measure the financial impact that, you, that the environment around your business uh, have on your business. For example, do you take into account a new regulation that is coming? Do you take into account how the environment and climate change are, are, are a burning issue on your business? Or are you taking into account how, how the, the society is uh, evolving around you? And I think this is really a main priority to have all this in your mind before uh, going for a fundraising. I think it's really exciting what you guys are, are working on and I think that we should meet up in a year or in a couple of years time to see where this is at because I think Absolutely. things are moving yeah. quite rapidly and it's, it, and it's a very good thing. We are at the end of our time, time is up. Um, we only just started, didn't we? <laughs> um, we will be just out there if any of you have any more questions and happy to discuss. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.